You either repeat and continue your status quo or you change and evolve. There is a particular truth that most of us are familiar with. It is that almost everyone is used to certain patterns in their life. Questions like, why does this happen to me again and again, are what most people have either asked themselves or have heard others ask themselves, haven't they? The Srimad Bhagavad Gita says that the entire universe, including creation, preservation and destruction, follows a cyclical model. It can thus be deduced that things will continue to repeat themselves in cycles forever unless an external force is applied to stop them or alter their intensity and direction. Take your life for instance. You feel that certain things happen again and again in your life. You have asked yourselves questions such as, why me, what wrong have I done, when will it ever stop and so on, haven't you? For which your mind could come up with multiple reasons. The following are common situations that must have happened to many of you. It could be that you time and again get cheated by your business partners. You fall sick too often for no rhyme or reason. You lose precious things almost every month. You get a good job, but before the first week comes to an end, you have someone in the organization that is hell-bent on getting you fired. You never go beyond your first date. If it did go far in building a relationship, it broke right at the moment when it was about to be fructified. You have a hell of a lot of money, but you feel you don't look good, you don't have many friends, and you feel that whoever is with you is unfaithful to you. You look great, are well educated, have a decent job, have amazing friends, but you feel you are not rich enough. A lot of people are always trying to be something that they are not. Now, let us get back to the essential truth which needs to be understood that everything repeats itself in patterns. In fact, nothing is random. Everything and every event are connected to something else. Well, what one might sometimes call a random event in their life might not necessarily be one, but it could be another form in which some regular pattern in their life repeats itself. I must say that I have come across some people who are of the opinion that every event is an individual and independent one. In order to answer them, I would like to use a simple example. Let's say you climb a ladder with 20 rungs. As you cross the 12th rung, you feel that the entire ladder seems to be cracking up and giving way. And yet you place your right foot on the 13th rung, it breaks and you fall down. Now, was the event of your falling down an independent one? Think about it. Firstly, had you ascertained the quality and sturdiness of the ladder? you would not have fallen at all. Secondly, if you went into details, the process of your falling began right from the moment you set your foot on the first rung of the ladder. If you were to go a stage deeper, the process of your falling started right from the moment you got into your car to drive to the place where the ladder was. Similarly, you could go on and on and deeper and deeper through hundreds and thousands of years to trace your very birth and your existence in the particular place or situation you are in. This means that your future will be either the result of your past, of doing nothing to set a desired course in the future, or of thinking clearly and confidently, planning, 
strategizing and performing action that would give you the chance of experiencing the kind of future that you would wish for yourself. Organized religions, in order to keep their followers well within the hierarchical structures, teach them to pray to their respective theistic celestial beings that are considered to be the topmost in those religions and follow the teachings of the clergy who are next in line after the king. The chain of command followed by most organized religions is as follows. God, the king or the ruler, the clergy, and the common people. This idea has somehow sneaked into the minds and psyche of people of the ancient Vedic Dharma, of which the highest stage is Vedanta, which is realizing non-duality or the all-pervading divine principle. With merely some basic understanding of Vedanta, the question of praying to a separate god or blaming such a non-existent being does not even arise. What a person who possesses this fundamental knowledge of Vedanta knows is that if you want something, you need to work for it. And should you need help to know what you should be doing to get what you want, study the Srimad Bhagavad Gita and some principal Upanishads, ask teachers or other experienced people, gain knowledge from them and proceed towards your goal. It is simple. If you want something, don't ask for it but work for it and get it. Let us take the scenario of war in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna was an intelligent, knowledgeable, fearless, highly skilled, physically strong and accomplished warrior king. But even he, in the state of confusion caused by the power of his intelligence-destroying emotions, could not think clearly. He sat down in his chariot right in the middle of the battlefield after almost giving up. That was a moment when a stinging question from Krishna regarding Arjuna's courage and manliness stirred him. Just imagine, Arjuna had the Supreme Bhagavan Krishna himself for a driver who was always there beside him. But not even once did Arjuna pray to Krishna to perform some magic and win the war for him. The important step that Arjuna took, which decided the outcome of the war, was to surrender before Krishna as a pupil would do before his or her teacher and request to be imparted with knowledge. The seventh shloka from the second chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Karpanya dosho pahatisva bhavaha prachamitvam dharma samuda jetaha with my mind in a state of confusion regarding my duty and the feeling of helplessness because of weakness, I ask you to tell me what is good for me. I am your disciple and I have surrendered my soul to you. Please teach me. Arjuna positioned himself as a pupil of the Supreme Bhagavan Krishna, the Jagat Guru or teacher of the universe and requested him to be taught the way to overcome his predicament and execute his dharma or duty as a warrior. It was that move made by Arjuna that led to the divine dialectical discourse in the form of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. In my case, it was an epiphanic moment I had many years ago that changed the course of my entire life. It was a simple question that occurred to me which was followed by a mental experiment I did on myself lasting 48 hours. A particular situation triggered me to seriously look into the rather cliched but not well understood question, who am I, which I paraphrased as who is the I in me. I decided to first find the answer to this question before looking into the world outside my mind and trying to come to terms with it. I went deeper and deeper into my mind to find out me in me and to find out what I really wanted. Well, I am not going into those details here in this video, but I shall most certainly reveal the golden mantra that did the job of changing everything about me that was holding me back. It goes like this. You either evolve and change your life 
or repeat and stay where you are. I say it again, you either evolve and change your life or repeat and stay where you are. Following this mantra almost religiously enabled me to make positive changes in myself, evolve and redefine almost everything about myself and the result was that my life changed completely for the better, of course. You either evolve and change your life or repeat and stay where you are. The choice is yours. Thank you.